We're about a month away from the NFL draft, and the consensus is that the first eight to nine picks are going to be offensive players. So, Aiden, it's uh, it's pretty safe to say this is going to be a consequential draft for the future of fantasy football. And though uh, this class is certainly deep, looking at the wide receiver position, I can't stop ladding my McConkey. All right, but it is extremely top heavy in terms of elite talent. And on today's episode of the Regression of the Mean podcast, we're going to be covering the magnificent seven of the 2024 NFL draft through the lens of dynasty fantasy football and redraft fantasy football. I'm your host, Sean Moran, and I am joined by my co-host, good friend, and fellow knower of ball, Aiden Haller. Aiden, the Bears have a chance to draft two of these guys. You got to be feeling pretty good heading into the NFL draft at the end of this month, huh? Yeah, I, I'm pretty fired up. I, I can't believe we're only about three weeks away at this point. Uh, feels like Caleb's an auto lock at this point. You know, he's not taking any other visits. Feels like we're getting the early install. Um, you know, he's in meetings with players, coaches, etc. You know, it seems like that that marriage is going to happen, whether all of the Twitter haters like it or not. He will not be pulling an Eli Manning and Caleb Williams is going to be a Chicago Bear. As for what happens at nine, I couldn't tell you. I'd love to land. The, uh, one of the three top receivers that we're going to talk about today. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We don't have many draft picks this year. So, you know, sliding back into the, you know, 14, 15 range, picking up another round two or round three pick would be pretty enticing. But, you know, if you got a guy like Roma Dunze, Joe Walt, Dallas Turner staring you down at nine, it's like there is some serious blue chip talent at the very top of this draft. And it falls off fast, especially once you get to day three. Like, I think day two is still littered with you know guys that are going to contribute right away, especially you know wide receivers, running backs. There's a ton of them. We're going to cover them over the next couple of weeks, but it's exciting, man. These, these top seven guys are good. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about these seven most important, most impactful, most consequential players in fantasy football in the 2024 NFL draft. Um, I am dubbing them the Magnificent Seven. So quickly before we dive in, the Magnificent Seven is the name given to the seven biggest and highest performing stocks in the U.S. stock market. Think Google, Meta, NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. Um, These are the heavy hitters who in 2024 have accounted for 40% of the NASDAQ 100 and 30% of the S&P. So uh, very, very top-heavy stocks, and this is a top-heavy draft. I think it's deep, right? I think there's some good long-tail prospects. Oh, yeah. But like, there are, I think, three really damn good quarterbacks, three really damn good elite wide receivers, and there's you know a special player that we're throwing in here at the end to make it the seventh. Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm just I'm excited to dive in. Um, I'm excited to talk about this from a dynasty perspective, from a from an overall fantasy perspective, because I think if these guys hit kind of changes the landscape of fantasy football. Um, It has that kind of consequential draft. And it reminds me a lot of the 2021 draft where none of the quarterbacks hit and all the receivers were good, Um, which that one was a little bit disappointing when you think Kyle Pitts really hasn't done that much either so far. So sometimes draft classes come in and they don't always deliver, but we're going to think about this from a really positive angle. And um, we're really excited to dive in on these top seven guys. Uh, But before we do that, two things, two things. One, if you are part of the 70% of people who are watching this video but aren't yet subscribed to the Regression of the Mean podcast, you know what to do. Like this video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on notifications to make sure you're not missing any of the NFL draft content that we are dropping on a weekly basis. And two, we know you got takes. We know you have opinions. Drop them in the comments below. We want to hear your guys' view on the 2024 draft class. Overrated, underrated, favorite prospect. Drake May's footwork, not going to have it. I will shut you down in the comments. Anything else is fair, Gabe. <laughs> All right, Aiden. Let's start with your guy. We're going to start with uh, with Caleb Williams here. And I'm thinking about the you know the magnificent seven stocks. What do you, you think, Amazon? Can you set your watch to Caleb Williams? Just you know, two day prime change the game is. Do, do we think Amazon's a fair? Uh, let's go. Let's yeah. roll with Amazon. He's the Amazon. Yeah, I think, <laughs> this yeah and seven I think here. you know. Like you think of Amazon and that is like, you know, truly generational kind of once in a lifetime type, you know, company and type stock, which like when you look at Caleb, like, again, that word gets thrown around generational, you know, like truly rare prospect. But like he's in that like Trevor Lawrence, Andrew Luck, like John Elway type of prospect where it's just like this guy, you know, is unbelievable. Like 
just looking at his college stats again and you look at like what he did over the last two years he averaged just over 4,000 yards and 36 touchdowns through the air another 400 yards roughly and 10 touchdowns on the ground like this guy's awesome sure he maybe doesn't have like you know that game breaking speed but like he's still pretty good on the ground and the throws he's able to make you know it's a very small percentage of quarterbacks in the NFL that are making the type of throws that he does it's it's truly special um like the easiest comp like you know is like my like biggest you know like like nemesis of all time you know it's like <laughs> like 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 the Aaron Rodgers comp is That's like it, it's yeah. super spot on you know like can do everything off platform sneaky athletic like he should step in from day one you know like he could easily be like a top 12 QB in you know the fantasy football landscape you know right away this is you know he's special it's it's hard not to get excited about you know what he's going to do especially like going back to what we talked about like the team around him is good he's got weapons like He's going to be slanging the rock. Like, he's going to break every Bears rookie passing record by like week 10, probably. It's the bar is so unbelievably low. He's going to shatter every record there in, in year one. It's not even close. Or what about just Bears passing records? I don't even think it has to be a rookie. He probably could. Has have probably, the Bears ever we had, haven't a 4, had a 4,000 passer? No, we're the only ones. We're the only I think, ones. I think you might we're be able ones. to hit that this year with your receiving core. He court. should if, be able to. If, if Caleb delivers on the promise, I think that's something that he can clear. You know, Caleb's 22 yeah. years old. Wins a Heisman as a true sophomore. If he comes out last year, he's like an auto first pick in the draft, even over CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson. Um, comes back out this year, and USC just wasn't very good. You know, their offensive line wasn't that good. Their pass catchers weren't that good. Um, their defense was the worst in the country. And it kind of just felt like it was Caleb Williams put the cape on, try and make something happen here against a really good Pac-12. Lots of good competition in the Pac-12 in its final year. Um, I still thought that what we saw on tape was was spectacular. Sure, sometimes he can make an easy play incredibly difficult, but I feel like was he doing that because he knew he had to? And I think the context for his play and his decision making is is hard to, you know, really remove from how bad that team was. Um and it was I, terrible, dude. I, I like to focus on his on his sophomore season. I just how special yeah. he was even his freshman year at Oklahoma too like he played very in system there like plenty of throws like in the pocket um yeah I think his sophomore season too it was you know more indicative of what I think we're going to see in the NFL like he can like there's like a narrative that he can't play in script and I think like I think I we're think just at, like true. I, I think we're just think bored at this true. point like no. people are just making things up at this I don't point. I don't think that's true because uh, Nate Tice over at the athletic football show he's comped him to Drew Brees like that's who he reminds him of, um, and he, he thinks that he plays within scripture. I mean, script. Uh, he plays within. Uh, he plays with Caleb Williams script. to Drew Brees. Yeah, that's what he comped him. Oh, he comped I, Caleb oh, Williams to that. Drew Brees. Uh, early career Drew Brees, before the shoulder injuries, before the injuries, yeah, he was running around mayhem. Purdue Drew Brees. Um, he says that he actually plays within, you know, the context he of does. the offense. Yeah. But the offense was just impossible last year. It just broke yeah. down so much. And he's a highly, highly accurate passer. Um, what he can do out out of structure is spectacular. The creativity is is off the charts. It's silly. It's the silly. aggressiveness is off the charts. The and again, the accuracy plus the aggressiveness, things we love to see. Um he's like he, his longest time to throw is like before scrambling was like six seconds seconds. like the guy was always trying to make a play happen for better for worse um i don't really think it's going to be an issue in the nfl i think this guy's going to be super special you just his off platform throwing ability and losing no zipper velocity on the ball when he does it it's just it's just special and 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 he's not six five two forty but you know he's six one two twenty stocky he's well built he's fine um He's fine. He's, he, yeah. he's not sure. He's somewhere he's not... in between like Kyler and Aaron Rodgers. Um, That's a fun player. You That's know, a fun like, player. He's more athletic than Aaron Rodgers, and he's kind of got the arm strength. You know, you could probably argue, you know, as strong or stronger than both of those guys, but like he's somewhere in the middle, and that's that's a pretty fun hybrid. So, no, nah, man, I'm excited. In, in fantasy football, you're, you're looking at a guy who's going to be able to dominate as a passer and then give you – Give you some points with his legs too. Um, oh, for sure. Rushing touchdowns are definitely in play in the red zone. He has that kind of mobility, and 
you know, yep. you're looking at let me 30 to 40 scrambling yards per game, um, especially God. especially if the Bears are losing and, you know, and they're in catch up, but it's a high volume offense. I think he's gonna be scrambling a ton. Um, yep. So I, I think he's going to be uh, he's going to be a workhorse in fantasy. Um, yeah, I think he's going to be amazing. And again, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen are fantastic pieces. Can't forget Cole Komet. I know I forgot him. I won't, I won't do it Don't again. Don't you dare forget I Cole Komet. <laughs> the, uh, the second quarterback and, and the guy that I have is my QB2. I'm tempted to have him as my QB one, but I, I can't get I can't get there over Caleb. And that is uh <laughs> that is Drake May. That is Drake May out of out of UNC. Um I have him as as meta. I have him as the Facebook. I I don't love yeah. meta or Facebook, but when you're looking at an app that's printing money, that's kind of what apps that print money are supposed to look like. And and Drake May looks like that prototypical QB build, six five. 240 throws like Justin Herbert <laughs> plays like Josh Allen with recklessness and scrambling. Um, he's kind of the full package at 21 years old tools galore. I mean, the guy's got all of the tools that you want. And, and though his 2023 wasn't as good as 2022, because in 2022, he led all QBs in EPA per play. But I think a lot of his performance in 2023 had to do with the fact that he had to go full Greg Jennings, put the team on his back, though, uh, with one of the, like, the worst offensive lines in college football and power five, truly bad receiving core, too. Like, it, it, it's really hard to kind of accurately assess Drake May when when his just center of guards just in his pocket, like plays over the minute he snapped it. And people are saying he's drifting uh, his footwork. I don't It sounds like he's just trying to create an extra opportunity to throw the ball downfield, be aggressive and try and win the game. So I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Drake may, but I'm curious to know what you think makes Drake may so special. You mentioned Justin Herbert and it feels like we're doing the exact same thing again. Um, you know, likely going to be, it feels like he's going to be the third QB taken off the board. Um, I'd be shocked, you know. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of assuming he's going to be the third QB off the board, similar to Justin Herbert. It felt like for whatever reason, like he like he had good combine numbers, you know, like had great college numbers, but for whatever reason, like the prospect fatigue, you, you know, just people people got over it. But like when you look at his size, you know, you know, six four, six five, two thirty, two forty, depending on the day. Look at his college production, you know, four thousand yards. 30 touchdowns every year, you know, a little more uh, rushing upside than Caleb too. Like, like you're probably looking at more than like five, 600 yards. And just looking at his PFF numbers, like this is a really good passer, dude. Number three rated in 2022, small dip in production. As we know in 2023 was still number seven. Like this is an incredible thrower of the football. And in my opinion, like significantly safer than Jaden Daniels. I think, Sure, you don't have as much athletic upside here, but like this guy can still scoot, dude. Um, number I don't one know. and number four in first down scrambles over the past two years. So an excellent yeah. scrambler, excellent size, speed, and instincts. Every throw is on the menu, and he's like ultra aggressive almost to a fault. Like it's like, hey, Drake, you know, maybe <laughs> tone it down or not. Yeah, tone it down a bit. And I, I will say, like, he, he's excellent at throwing the ball over the middle of the field. He could definitely play within like the parameters of a Shanahan system, but you know, accuracy is a little bit of a concern, right? He can spray some balls. Um, so he can try and kind of do a little bit too much. Think young Josh Allen to an extent, like ultra aggressive athletic quarterback, always trying to make a play, but then, you know, for like five seconds goes full, like Labrador retriever brain. And you have no idea what happened there. <laughs> like Drake, Drake May's got some of that. I mean, there was a play this year where, He's running to his left, getting tackled, and just decides to throw a ball uh, with his left hand for a touchdown. It's just I like, was hoping that's what you were going to say. It, it, I mean, they, that's full Josh Allen. Stuff. It's amazing, right? So like yeah. every you know two out of three times you do that, awesome shit can happen. But on that third time, you're like, what was going on right there? Right? Um, I, I think that I think that that has to be called out. I think there's a degree of risk in that since I've heard people say that if you loved Anthony Richardson as a prospect. You're going to love Drake May and uh, look where I'm at. I, I'm, I feel like I'm typecasted in that sense, but um, I'm, I'm a yeah. huge fan of, of Drake May's game. I think he's less of a project than people think. I think he's much more cerebral. Um, from my understanding of the UNC offense, he was checking you know, protections at the line of scrimmage. He was really good at reading blitz coverage. Um, the guy just seems like 
the prototypical quarterback. Like he looks like yeah. Justin Herbert and Josh Allen and he plays like Justin Herbert and Josh Allen. And that's kind of what you want out of the quarterback position. And he's yeah. got great intangibles. I don't know, man. I feel like you can set your watch to Drake. May I think he's going to be good. He reminds me of Deshaun Watson, uh, ultra aggressive playmaker. Um, he doesn't want as many big games as Watson did in college, but just the kind of guy that you could plop in there throw for 4,000 yards, run for 500. I think he's going to score a shit ton of fantasy points. I hope he goes to the commanders. Same. He ran, he ran Same. an air raid offense uh, at UNC. Uh, the commanders have like, I'd say a slightly below to average offensive line. Um, capable playmakers in Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin. I like Brian Robinson. You know, Austin Eckler's fun to, to toss in there. I think I think that's a much more better environment than the Patriots. Um, but yeah, that's an understatement. I don't know. Cause I hear good things about this Patriots offensive coordinator. He came from Drew Petzing, um, and, and that system, right. With this, the, the weapons Kevin's, are the just Kevin Stefanski system. Just yeah. The, the weapons barren, are, dude. you got pop Douglas, <laughs> Hunter Juju, Henry, Hunter Henry, Juju, Mondre, like torn ACL, yeah, Kendrick it's, Bourne. It's all bad, dude. Yeah. yeah and, 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 and I hear this like, oh, maybe let him sit. I, I don't believe in that as a Trey Lance, uh, as someone who watched the Trey Lance thing go down. No, play them, play the quarterback. Yeah. I, unless it's like a Bears level bad for Justin Fields and it's harming them. But I don't understand I don't know, the project narrative with him. Um, you know, the guy 40 played touchdowns like two incredible seasons. Yeah, like as a 19 year old, you know, backed it up with almost equally as impressive season. Sure, the production took a small dip. The offense wasn't as good to your point. Um, the project narrative is crazy. I think some of the other quarterbacks we're going to get into or, or not get into, but you know, that we'll cover over the coming weeks are far bigger projects than the Drake may. I think there are three quarterbacks we're talking about all three a day that can and should start from day one. The, the next couple of quarterbacks, you know, probably should not be starting right away. I think he's the easy QB two. If you had him as QB one, I yeah. wouldn't fault you. Like I, I just, I, in most I'm, years he would be, it's just yeah. Caleb Williams in this draft. Like most years he would be the first overall pick. Moving on to our third guy, I've I've got him as as the apple. He's just the known commodity. You throw him in your portfolio, it's it's gonna grow no matter what. The biggest market cap company, um, known brand, and that and that's Marvin Harrison Jr., the Ohio State twenty one year old wide receiver, prototypical X. Like if you were gonna build an X receiver in a lab, it's six four, two hundred pounds, four four three forty, <laughs> amazing hands technician is a route runner uh it would probably be marvin harrison jr aiden what makes marvin harrison jr and how do you think he's going to reward fantasy managers his first year in the nfl yeah like you said this is like this is such a special prospect in terms of you know size weight speed hands or route running like again like we're in the rare conversation of like 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 you look at wide receivers that have been taken in the top five, like those are truly rare prospects. You're looking at Larry Fitzgerald. You're looking at Megatron. You're looking at Julio Jones, Andre Johnson. Like those guys are special. Look at like how their careers unfolded. You're not picking a wide receiver in the top five and watching these guys fail. It's like, no. these are absolute bona fide studs, you know, back to back years with 1200 plus yards and 14 touchdowns. Spent a lot of last year being double covered too. It didn't matter. This guy is so silky smooth on all three levels of the football field. It's it's pretty exciting. I I I missed about like halfway through last year's NFL season when the Caleb Marvin Harrison Jr. dream was still alive. Because <laughs> uh, putting the two together would have been like an absolute dream come true. But you know, wherever this guy lands, like, you know, this is all pro potential, you know top five wide receiver he'll be getting drafted you know in the first round you know very soon in fantasy football drafts probably not his rookie year we'll you know have to earn that one but like there's no reason why he's not getting drafted in the first round in your 2025 drafts like i think he's going to be that good right away so i am i am so excited to watch this guy play football dude he goes in the late second right now an underdog <laughs> so you're already having to yeah, pay up for him he, um, he's right there oh and that's i think that's banging on him playing with kyler because if he's like a you know patriot if he plays with kyler we yeah, are yeah that's gonna be pretty, even if but, pretty fun. but let's say there's a world where qbs go one through four and you pair him with justin herbert with herbie holy shit let's yeah. go buckle up and prepare for instant instant thousand yard season there 
every route in every area of the field is available to Marvin Harrison Jr. Correct. Um, there, there's no limitations. <laughs> He's and all systems go. I and think. it looks easy. Like, yeah, he exactly. glides across the football field, like, because of how tall and fast he is. Like, he's truly just like floating. And you're like, wow, this guy is, this guy is special. So, Four, yeah. 1,400 yards last season um, as a sophomore. Uh, follows it up with another 1,400 yards. My favorite part about that, back to back 1,400 yards, he went from CJ Stroud to Kyle McCord. So that's a pretty big drop in QB ability. Uh, so that's you, a nice way to put it. Kyle you, McCord's now at Syracuse. Yeah, so. not very good. <laughs> not, not very good. So it's it's pretty pretty spectacular to see him see him produce with two very different varying level skills of of quarterback. I think there's some extra juice for him if they play him more out of the slot. He was like basically lined up exclusively as an X on the outside off the line of scrimmage. I think that you could put him in the slot, move him outside, kind of that's change up his route distribution, dude. like. I think he can play all over the formation, which I think makes him makes him truly deadly as a wide receiver. Yep. Um, wild stat: you mentioned how he was double double covered. Matt Harmon's reception perception uh, when he ran his uh, when he charted Marvin Harrison Jr. MHJ uh, faced seventeen percent of the sampled routes versus double coverage, which was the highest of any sampled player in RP's history. Harrison had a seventy percent success rate versus double coverage, which you guessed it was the best in RP's charting history. Um, so this guy is spectacular. He's already an NFL wide receiver in terms of skill and ability to win everywhere. His ability to win against press man coverage, zone coverage. He's he's like he's already an NFL player. <laughs> you know, he <laughs> it's, it's he's just already an NFL player. And the, the comp and we knew have, it a year ago. Like we yeah. knew it a year ago. And yeah. Oh my God. And, and the comp I have for him is AJ Green. And I think um, when this comp comes out, some people are like, "Oh, really?" AJ AJ Green was amazing. He was truly. People forget how truly amazing AJ Green. Was. He, he he was like that like five year stretch was unbelievable. Foot issues derailed AJ Green's career, but when AJ yeah. Green was healthy, he was a top five wide receiver in the NFL, and he was immediately yeah. good. I think he cleared a thousand first year in the league, easy money. So that prototypical X that that that's who he he reminds me of, and um, I think he's even faster than AJ Green. So I I wouldn't put him in the Julio tier because Julio is just a different level of athleticism. Um, but I, I'd be pretty comfortable putting him just below Julio Jones in terms of that prototypical X wide receiver. Yeah, I was gonna put him like he reminds me like somewhere in between like DeAndre Hopkins and like Larry Fitzgerald. Um, yeah, I see that. So, but like the again, like this is another one where like any comp that like you're hearing is like pretty good. You're you're just fine with that outcome. Like if he's AJ Green, stoked. DeAndre Hopkins, stoked. If the Cardinals. Get another Larry Fitzgerald type be player. Like, be a bummer. As a Niner be, fan, it'd I'd be, be a bummer, bummer for you, but like, it'd be pretty cool. Like, just back to back legendary prospects that just absolutely ball out. So, in side tangent, people are saying, oh, what if Monty Awesome for it does the whole trade down to trade? I hope they fuck no. that up. I hope they galaxy no. brain this and he lands on a different team. Let's get him in the AFC, he, please. Yeah. If he's your clear cut wide receiver one, take you him. Go get him. And you don't think about it. If you value all three of those wide receivers the same, sure, you can go, you know play war room magic and you know try to get another round two pick but like no this is not a prospect that you pass up on but hey things are changing they're changing in the nfl draft and how people evaluate receivers and they're changing in the stock market apple is no longer the hottest stock in town because ai is taking over aiden and, yeah. and and that's nvidia nvidia is now the hottest stock you can buy and nvidia my comp is malik neighbors because for some people malik neighbors he is by far and away their wide receiver one over Marvin Harrison Jr. I am not there yet. I think we'll discuss a little bit more, but I'm not trying to take away anything from Malik Neighbors out of LSU. 20 years old and had one of the best collegiate wide receiver seasons we've seen in a very long time in terms of efficiency, big playability. Um, this guy is a game-wrecking slot playmaker that I think you could build an entire NFL offense out of and his tackle-breaking ability. I don't know how fast he translates day one versus Marvin Harrison Jr. Because I do think he's a little bit more specialized in the sense you want to use him on screens and, and slants and, and a lot of the middle of the field stuff, which is great. And I think he can eat in the NFL doing that. But I just think he's a little bit more of a specialized player. But I think his potential and his athletic ability is it might even be higher than Marvin Harrison Jr. So my question to you, Aiden, is what makes Malik Neighbors so special? He reminds me a lot, like, it's easy, too, because of the same college, but, like, 
Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. when he came okay. out of college. Like, this is a guy that's like gonna catch a slant, and you know, if there's like seven yard touchdown, just like gone. Like, if like when he gets to the next level, it's going to be like it absolutely takes just takes the wheels off of that defense. So, you know, just looking at some of his stats, it's like first of all, like the clear cut number one wide receiver according to PFF last year. Followed up a pretty good junior year where he went for about a thousand yards. Yeah, had over fifteen hundred yards this year. Wow, and yeah. fourteen touchdowns. Like, sure, he had Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels won the Heisman, so of course, you know, of course, someone's going to pop there. But absolute monster season. And you look yeah. at Marvin Harrison Jr., who didn't do the combine, didn't do his pro day or anything. I think neighbors kind of took that personally and just like absolutely crushed every metric. Do you ran a four three five? Like, not yeah. He's unbelievably fast. Like. Going back to Drake May, kind of like the conversation there, like Malik Neighbors would be the wide receiver one in most drafts in the last decade if it wasn't for Marvin Harrison Jr. So it's like, to your point, I'm sure there are, I don't know if it's rumors, but like I would not be shocked if there are plenty of teams that have Neighbors over Marvin Harrison it's Jr. It's what you it's value. Like, it's if, if it's it's like what you value. Because like... Yeah, it's, it, it, it's choose your flavor here, but oh, they're both 40. delicious. 41% of his plays over the last two years went for 15 plus yards. Yeah, it, it's he, just a truly special playmaker with the ball in his hands. 60% of his yards last year came from the slot. 30% of his production came from slot fades. <laughs> so just <laughs> 58 of his receptions were hitches and goes. So my man is just get him the ball, throw it deep to him. Or let him work over the middle of the field. I think if he's deployed in a similar manner in the NFL, he's just going to absolutely destroy defenses with his yak ability. OBJ catching a slant over the middle of the field and house calling it for 80 yards. I, I, That's what these I are see his comps. That's what I see with him. Here, here's what you see. Here are his comps, Aiden. OBJ, Jamar Chase, yeah. Garrett Wilson, DJ Moore, Brandon Ayuk, and Jalen Waddell. It's a yeah, fun gonna, list. That's a I was going to say Wilson list. and DJ Moore. Yeah. Uh, that is a fun list and oh um God, it's fun. i think he's less refined is the other two guys that we're going to talk about I mean, and marvin harrison and the other receiver but i just yeah. think his ability and his athleticism like his his uh his ability to accelerate and decelerate is is just it's special you see it on the basketball court a lot with guys that are just wiggly and ability to yeah. slow down and speed up and you don't necessarily see it in his smoothness as in the nfl and neighbors is uh He's Nvidia for a reason. He's you know he's going to be very very popular for some yeah. investors. Yeah. Um, the next guy we have probably the most controversial one, probably. Um, yeah. And that's Jaden Daniels. So I I, I have Jaden Daniels as Tesla. You know everyone's <laughs> everyone's into the Tesla stock and how it rises, just like uh, Jaden Daniels' stock rose his senior year at LSU. Uh, he started his career at Arizona State. Five years later, my man put up one of the greatest collegiate seasons of all time. Um, Hyper accurate QB uh, with an excellent deep ball. He doesn't have like an amazing arm like Drake or Caleb, but he's got a good arm, really good mechanics, super accurate, and then just an absolute chaos merchant merchant as as a scrambler. Um, He's not one of these guys that keeps his eyes down the field and uses his feet. No, he's like once he realizes he's going to run, he takes off, he gets out of there. And his scrambling ability, I wouldn't say like, it's like it's it sounds sacrilege to say, but it, it's it's like up there with Lamar Jackson and RG three in terms of him as a scrambler. Um, it, it's second to none the impact it has on defenses. So, outside of the scrambling ability, the deep ball ability, is there anything else you're seeing with Jaden Daniels that makes you think that he has the potential to break fantasy football? Yeah, it's like you mentioned, like the dual threat ability is you know truly special. Like it's it's what leads to those monster weeks in fantasy. Like when you watch Lamar Jackson break a 70 yard rushing touchdown, next possession, he throws for a 40 yard bomb to Mark Andrews. It's like, holy shit. Like this guy can truly do everything. Yeah, um, 20 points in a blink of an eye. And like some people will knock him, you know, he's a little scrawny or in terms of his size, he's probably got some bulking up. 190. To do. He's six you know, one, like, 190. That's, it's pretty skinny. That's, he's that's a little skinnier. That's skinny. And you know, Played five years in college, so it's like, you know, he's a little older than Drake May. He's a little older than Caleb Williams. He's still, what, probably 22 years old. Um, You know, still relatively young in terms of, you know, a prospect overall. And just like we've talked about it on previous episodes, the jump he made from year four to five is insane. is just insane. Like the accuracy, the turnovers going down, you know, like the touchdowns, the rushing, every 
any single metric you want that like you're going to try to hang your hat on, like he improved dramatically on. So it's like, and that's what you want to see. Like you want to see a guy that's gotten better dramatically. Yeah. And I'm excited for him. You know, I, I don't know exactly what to do with him. Um, We'll see where he goes, but he could break the slate. Yeah. You know, Lamar Jackson, (laughs) Justin Fields, like the slate has been broken. He could be rushing for 50 to a hundred yards weekly plus throwing for another 200. Like, He's an Man, interesting it's... quarterback because I don't think you're going to build a QB run game around him. I think his size would make that a little foolish. He'd get hurt. I mean, yeah, we just hurt. saw, you know, Anthony Richardson, who's literally built out of a lab to be in the QB run game, barely be able to stay healthy. So, like, his ability to get down is non existent. Um, the man throws himself <laughs> into danger. Like, he, he'll, <laughs> I mean, he just runs full speed at defenders and gets trucked. Like, it's a little wily e. coyote Johnny Knoxville ish. It's it's kind of oh. insane to watch in real time. Um, I don't know if the late career breakout thing is as bad as some people say. Like, no, he's twenty three, but he's a true twenty three. He won't be twenty four until the end of next season, right? So it's not like he's Bo Nix, who's like gonna be twenty five. Um, yeah. Sure, it took him a while to break out, and his breakout didn't occur until he played behind an elite offensive line with elite wide receivers. That's fine. He probably had a, the best receiving trio in the NFL. I mean, the in college last year, and he has yeah. two tackles that are probably going to get drafted next year. So it's an, an elite um, offense he played in. But but regardless, like I, I think he offers a ton of good intangibles to NFL offenses with his accuracy. Like he's so accurate. Like maybe he didn't throw over the field a ton. Seventy two percent, dude. So Seventy accurate. plus is crazy accurate. Consistent Last... throwing motion too. Like it's really yeah. good mechanics. I was kind of surprised how good of a passer he was. Kind of thinking he was just going to be a running quarterback. Um, I know. I'm worried about him because his poor pressure to sack rate. Like he wasn't good with pressure. Took a ton of sacks. Didn't play with a lot of play action, which is a staple of NFL offenses. Doesn't throw over the middle of the field a ton. So like these are things you can throw out there, and I that's why I think he's clearly QB three or even QB four in some instances for for some people, which I get. But I definitely feel like he could he could be be a one man offense if he hits right for an NFL team. Um, in terms of what he can do as a deep ball passer, an accurate passer, and and as a rusher. And my call for him is Marcus Mariota, and I know that's not really thought of well because Marcus Mariota injured his elbow and his career went downhill. But he was pretty damn effective in fantasy football for the first couple of years of his career. And um, I think he can follow a similar path. So hopefully we want him to stay healthy. We were telling about this earlier, talking about this earlier. I think he's a better redraft player than a dynasty player at this point. Um, yeah. But I'm really excited. I, I'm, I'm kind of coming around because I, I wasn't like a full blown hater, but I was like, hmm, I don't know how good he's going to be long term in the NFL. But for fantasy, I, I feel like the upside's insane. Yeah, I'm just hoping he doesn't go to New England. Um, like, I think Drake May would do better in New England than Jaden Daniels personally. Like, I think May would do better with, you know, not as good of a supporting cast. So <laughs> for fantasy purposes, I'd love to see him land in Washington. But regardless, yeah, this is a guy that I'm I'm very excited to draft in pretty much all formats this year. So we, we've got five guys we've already called out. We got Caleb Williams. He's the Amazon of the NFL draft. We got Drake May, who's meta. Marvin Harrison Jr.'s Apple, Malik Neighbors, NVIDIA, Jaden Daniels, Tesla. And number six, Google. You're going to use it every day. Ultra dependable. So many different products. So many things it can do. So versatile. Reminds you a lot of a, a prototypical X wide receiver who gets open on every single route. The best hands in the class. Probably got the coolest name in the class. That is, none that is other. definitely the coolest name. That's then Roma, the coolest Roma Dunze, name. the wide receiver out of Washington, the 21-year-old who I have comped as a big Chris Olave, which uh, is a pretty elite player, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about Roma Dunze and why you think he could be a special fantasy asset. Yeah, like you said, this this feels like a very safe pick. Like The floor is so high with this guy. Just starting with his you know size and weight. Six foot three, two fifteen. Again, like that's the size you want to win outside at the NFL level. Four years in college, um, you know, not an early exit, but that's fine. Led the NCAA in receiving yards last year. The dude's stat line was just gross. Ninety-two catches, sixteen hundred and forty yards, and thirteen touchdowns. 
And he was no, you know, no slouch his junior year either. You know, he backed up a 1200 yard season. Like those are two incredible seasons back to back. Um, I know we talk about reception perception quite a bit. <laughs> when you look at <laughs> Matt Harmon's work on Roma Dunze, it first is first ever green chart. That is a green un- tree. Believable. That is a green yeah, tree. This 87th is seventh percentile success rate against man. 81st percentile against zone. 92 against press man coverage. His entire route tree, ladies, I'm sorry, gentlemen, is uh, 100% green. It's it's kind of it's insane. the first it's the first ever like Matt Harmon was like shocked like talking about it because it's like this is but he but if you watch his game that shouldn't surprise you he wins at every level like he he is that receiver you know he wins at the short stuff he's very good one of my favorite things with him um is like like you watch like some of like the plays along the sidelines is like the late hands like he's so good at the late hands it's just like oh man I see like. I'm yeah. thinking about him as a bear and I'm just like starting to drool a little bit here. Like this guy yeah. is really damn good. And I think like at the beginning of the off season, like going into this, like kind of draft and off season process, it kind of felt like, you know, neighbors and Marvin Harrison were like clearly above this guy. Whereas he has solidified himself like in that, like, you know, one, a one B one C like conversation. And the rest of the guys are, you know, clearly the tier below him. I think like, it's fine to sit like, I don't, think it's crazy to think like there's a world where teams might take like Madunze over neighbors like these no. three guys like I don't think it's cut in stone that it's going to go Marvin neighbors Odunze. like no. you could see any order I'd be shocked if Odunze went first out of them I would be too. Um, I would be too I, but I think Odunze is probably second or third on most people's boards um but yeah. I again like going back to reception perception Matt Harmon on his Special. sampled routes 89% contested catch rate. It's pretty good. Um, didn't drop a single ball. Harmon said he has the, by far and away the best hands in the, in this draft. So, I, I mean, Adunze, people have questioned his analytical profile, right? Um, he didn't necessarily dominate from a statistical perspective, but from film nerds, you know, they're saying he's Devontae Adams. Right? That's what people are saying here, um, which is a pretty good comp. We have OBJ, Devontae uh, Adams, and AJ call. Green in this class. Uh, that's that's pretty fun. We 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 are we are here for that. I I think Odunze is um the most slept on out of this three, and in a redraft, yeah, he's like a fourth or fifth round pick. That's pretty sick. That's 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 pretty sick in my opinion. I'm not gonna lie, and that's somebody yeah. I'm gonna be targeting like at will. And in dynasty, I wouldn't be shocked in five years if Odunze is the guy. Right? I wouldn't. Um. I wouldn't know really, honestly. Like I, I think he's just that special of a talent. And um I hope he doesn't get stuck on a team where he's like getting projected third in targets. People are like, let's put him on the bear. And I love that. Put him on the bears, it's great. But I want to say right away. I, I want him on the Giants. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want him on the Giants. I want him being I want this entire pass game to run through Odunze with a good OC, right? Even though the Giants have questionable quarterback play, I'd love to see him with Brian Dable. Um Oh, this class is so good. I can't believe this is the seventh guy. I can't believe this is the seventh guy. Um, it's silly, dude. It's like, like Microsoft. It's Microsoft yeah. is my comp for him because Microsoft's been around forever. We forget about it, and the returns are fucking awesome. Go buy some Microsoft stock. Come back in two years. Yeah. You're going to be pretty happy with how that performance did. And uh, the guy we're talking about here is Brock Bowers. So, Aiden, why do you love Brock Bowers? Yeah, th- this is a guy that I feel like has almost gotten like lost in the mix here. Um, he definitely in the has. off season, I think, because of the quarterbacks and the wide receivers. But we're looking at one of the most like special tight end prospects like of all time. Um, you know, Kyle Pitts was you know truly special, and but you could argue like Brock Bowers is is probably better in terms of the production and just like the overall like body of work. Just <clears throat> in terms of like production in college, like tight ends don't typically produce like this. Like he was averaging yeah. 60 catches, 800 plus yards and six touchdowns over, um, over his last two years in Georgia. And he was that's, hurt last year. That's he silly. Tight like, he had tight yeah. surgery last year. Silly production. The number three PFF rated tight end in consecutive years. Um, so the dude just like consistently performed here. Um, again, he's kind of getting lost in the mix. I don't know where he's going to land. Um, I hopefully Denver. I did, we were, I was saying yeah. before the call, my, yeah. my I, I like Denver because they don't have a true like alpha in the offense. Um, and I think Sean Payton would know how to use him from his previous experience with Jimmy Graham, who he got a lot out of a 
offensive yeah. weapon at tight end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Denver as a spot for him. I like the Jets too. I think the Jets. I was going to say the Jets. I they think... might do that shit where they put him on the line though. And I don't really. I really hope whoever team drafts him doesn't be like, yeah, we're going to make him an inline tight end and make him learn the position, which is like fine. Like, I think that'll make him a more well-rounded prospect. And I definitely don't think he's a bad blocker per se at six three, but I want this guy in the slot. I want this guy in the slot dunking on safeties and linebackers. I think somebody pulled this play Hayden Winks did where it was like they had four future NFL players on the field in the Georgia passing offense, right? I think it was like A.D. Mitchell, Ladd. I think George Pickens was out there, whatever. Like they're loaded offense. Like got to have it play. It was just a fade down the sidelines to Brock Bowers, which he hauled. It's in. silly. It, 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 it's it, silly. He was the best offensive player on the best team in college football over the past three yeah. seasons. Like, and what's so cool about him, and I think people have knocked this, is like, oh, if, why don't you exclude screen screen production from Brock Bowers? Is you know, yeah, why, why the hell would I do, would that? do that? That's pretty fucking well, cool. I can run some tight yeah. end screens. Like that's a great yeah, part like, of the play. I'd love to incorporate that. He's similar to Sam Laporta in that sense, where it's like throw him a ball or two out in the flat and just watch him cook some people with yeah, the ball in his hands. Yeah. That's not Kyle Pitts's game, or at least that hasn't ever been used in Kyle Pitts's game. Maybe that'd be epic if he was used that way but it's like throw him the ball in a short yarded situation let him cook you can also throw him in downfield too um i i think dude i think he's a better version of sam laporta um and i don't know if i could say he's going to be george kittle because i don't think he might have ever the blocking ability of george kittle but i think he's as fast and as athletic he's as george fast, kittle. yeah like he's so, faster than laporta like yeah he's another guy like the way he moves um for a guy that's 6'4", 240, like, should not move. Like, you know, no. like, he's he's outrunning DBs. Like, you know, some of the most athletic guys on your football teams. Like, pretty easily, too. Um, so, long no, speed. I'm ex- He's got true long speed. When he, start, when he, gets, when he gets going oh, and hits the sure. open field, man. I mean, oh, dude, this class is so sick. If you have a top seven pick in Dynasty, you're, you're set. Don't overthink it. Don't I don't, take, don't, I don't have JJ any McCarthy. this year, and I, and I please don't, don't take do myself. Please don't take <laughs> don't J.J. Take McCarthy. McCarthy. <laughs> he was left off for a reason. Um. But man, I, I, this, this this has really to be is... the top seven. This has to be your top seven. Like, there is no other way around it. I don't care what order you do it in. I I have my own personal order, but this has to be your top seven in Dynasty, and I'm not sharing it at this time. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that's it. Next week we're, we're going to be talking wide receivers. Week after that, running backs. We are uh, we're pumped for the NFL draft, man. So thank you everybody for for tuning in. Aiden, thank you for joining. And um, until next time. <laughs>